Hello everyone. In this video I will discuss one of the films called Domain, and never forget that I always pray for you and your family to be happy and healthy always. Several television broadcasts reported on a deadly virus, estimating that three billion people have died. Consequently, the human population has drastically decreased. Therefore, the government has devised a rescue plan which involves building 500,000 bunkers and conducting a lottery to determine who will inhabit them. Each bunker will have only one occupant, and they must remain there until everything returns to normal. Eventually, the people will be gathered together to undergo a repopulation program. The bunkers are equipped with various facilities, including enough food supplies for 70 years in the form of a protein powder called Supplyval. The bunkers also have water sourced from recycling, electricity generated through exercise, and a large screen displaying surface conditions. During the day, the screen will show a bright environment, while at night it will turn dark, which helps the occupants regulate their sleep patterns. Half a decade has passed, and a group of seven people is shown conversing via video conference. Although each person lives in their own bunker, they do almost everything together, and every decision is made based on a vote. These seven individuals are named after the location of their respective bunkers, and Boston is the group leader, a firm yet soft-hearted man. One day, during a discussion, Orlando, who is harsh, verbally abused all his peers. He also claims that the outside world will never return to normal, meaning they will all be trapped in their bunkers for life. Boston and the others try to calm him down, but Orlando ignores them and reveals a horrifying past where he killed 15 people and received a life sentence in prison. One of the group members, Atlanta, is a deeply religious woman who feels angry, viewing Orlando as a madman who has committed atrocities for pleasure. Eventually, the other group members become disappointed and decide to remove Orlando from the group. Denver, who is quite skilled in IT, announces that he has hacked the communication system, allowing them to cut off Orlando's transmission. However, once done, it proves difficult to reconnect, meaning Orlando will spend the rest of his life alone without anyone to talk to. Of course, this was not an easy decision, so the group had to vote. Boston, Atlanta, and a man named Chicago agree to cut off Orlando's communication. However, the other two members, Phoenix and Houston, oppose it, believing the punishment is too severe. Denver holds the deciding vote, while Orlando challenges the group to make their decision quickly and expresses disgust at seeing their faces. In the end, Denver hacks the system to fulfill Orlando's request to cut off his transmission. That night, Phoenix, struggling to sleep, talks with Denver about past events. She considers their action cruel, but Denver comforts her, saying it was the best decision they made together. It's revealed at this moment that Denver and Phoenix are in a romantic relationship. Eight months later, despite adjusting to the loss of one group member, they face new issues. The display of the surface conditions suddenly changes in Houston's bunker, causing him sleepless nights. After morning pleasantries, the group begins their discussion, reporting on monitoring results. Each member has assigned tasks. Atlanta monitors the group's physical conditions, while Denver reports on surface situations due to the various status displays on the monitors, such as the remaining human population, virus spread, heart rates of bunker occupants, and more. It's deemed beneficial for each member to oversee a specific monitor. While everyone was busy reporting, Chicago remained silent, finding it all a waste of time because he believed they would never see the outside world again. Hearing this, Boston immediately scolded him, but Chicago pressed a button displaying a video about life inside the bunker, which everyone had to watch since it couldn't be skipped. In the video, bunker founder Nadine began explaining the various facilities and revealed that the bunker was located 30 feet underground. She mentioned that out of 500,000 people, they were divided into several groups, each consisting of seven members, whose sole task was to help each other survive until the Sahara flu virus was eradicated. A few days later, during a usual group discussion, the status display suddenly malfunctioned and went blank. Boston thought it was just temporary damage, but the other members worried about the bunker starting to deteriorate. Strangely, all six members experienced the same issue despite being separated by thousands of kilometers. Sometime later, 
Phoenix contacted her lover, Denver, privately, suspecting that the system might have been compromised when Denver hacked to cut off Orlando's transmission, leaving a loophole. Phoenix pleaded with Denver to hack it again to restore Orlando, believing it might be the only way to fix the system. There was some debate, as Denver considered Phoenix's proposal futile due to its slim chances of success. Phoenix then shared her life story from the past, revealing that her father had died when she was very young, leaving her and her mother alone. As she grew up, Phoenix fell into bad company, started using drugs and occasionally ran away from home. One day, unable to find drugs and suspecting her mother had disposed of them, Phoenix, in a fit of rage, killed her mother, leading to her solitary imprisonment until she won the lottery to live in the bunker. Moved by Phoenix's story, Denver promised to try hacking the system again to restore Orlando's transmission. One night, Denver finally succeeded and immediately informed Phoenix. Strangely, when they connected, it was shocking to find that Orlando's bunker was empty. Sometime later, the couple showed Orlando's bunker display to the other members, confirming their suspicion. Boston was displeased with this as Denver and Phoenix had made the decision secretly. Boston continued to grumble until Denver and Phoenix asserted that they no longer cared about agreements and voting. That night, Phoenix contacted Denver privately, asking him to access Orlando's personal videos, believing there might be clues about what happened to their colleague. Denver began his expertise by accessing Orlando's videos and displaying them on the monitor. Most of the videos showed Orlando exercising and growing increasingly erratic. However, something odd happened in the last video. It seemed scrambled, with only Orlando's screams audible. When it replayed, Orlando was no longer there. It appeared someone or something had abducted him. The next day, the entire group discussed this, with each member expressing their opinion. According to Boston, no humans survived outside, and the bunker was impenetrable. Therefore, he concluded that Denver and Phoenix were hallucinating. However, Phoenix argued differently, insisting they needed to find a way out before ending up like Orlando. Meanwhile, Houston began losing his sanity due to ongoing issues with his room's display, having not slept for nearly a week. He supported Phoenix's plan to escape, but Boston ordered everyone to remain calm until stronger evidence was found. Unfortunately, conditions worsened that night, and Houston completely lost his sanity, banging his head against the wall. Suddenly, there was a disruption in Houston's transmission, and from the voices heard, it seemed someone had breached the bunker. When the transmission returned to normal, they were shocked to see Houston's bunker empty. Now, everyone believed that something had indeed happened to both Houston and Orlando. The next morning, Phoenix took over leadership of the group and instructed all members to find something suspicious in their bunkers that could potentially be used as an escape route. Only Chicago was lazy, while the others agreed and began searching. Shortly after, Atlanta, the obedient woman, was the first to find a clue. She opened a pipe through which supplival protein was distributed and discovered a hidden room behind the wall. This puzzled everyone because the bunker was supposed to be buried 30 feet underground. Before they could find an answer, a similar incident suddenly happened to Atlanta. The remaining group members were devastated by Atlanta's disappearance, realizing anyone could be targeted at any time. Meanwhile, Chicago, completely distraught, slowly walked towards the main door and did something unthinkable to end it all. Now, only three people remained. Boston and Phoenix accepted their fate, but Denver, refusing to give up, used his skills to hack deeper into the system to dig up data and explained to his friends that there were still other bunker occupants surviving. Initially skeptical, Boston and Phoenix were convinced when Denver showed them transmissions from another survivor although they couldn't interact. Strangely, despite hacking the entire system, Denver could only locate 1,000 bunkers, not the 500,000 mentioned by Nadine. Hearing this, Phoenix believed something was amiss and once again proposed sabotaging the airlock doors as an escape route. It was risky, but Phoenix was so confident that her two companions agreed to the plan. Denver and Phoenix promised to meet somewhere while Boston, not wanting to interfere, decided to find his own way out. It turned out the exit led to a building with large corridors, and Phoenix was completely shocked, because everything was far from what she had imagined. 
before she could process anything, Denver and Boston suddenly emerged from two adjacent rooms, implying that for almost a decade, they had been in the same building. The three of them began to investigate the strange building until they reached the rooftop, where they could finally feel the fresh air and warmth of the sun. Phoenix climbed the stairs to observe their surroundings, which surprised her greatly. Everyone appeared normal, and life seemed to be going on as usual. A few moments later, Phoenix approached her colleagues to relay this information. However, they still needed to proceed cautiously because two individuals resembling guards were stationed at the door. With no other options, Boston decided to sacrifice himself to create a diversion so that his two companions could escape. The plan succeeded perfectly, and Denver and Phoenix hurried until they found a workspace. Suddenly, Bunker founder Nadine appeared with a pistol, threatening Denver to back off. Nadine also warned Phoenix to stay away from Denver, describing him as extremely dangerous. Confused, Phoenix remained silent until Nadine revealed the truth. The bunker was actually a special prison, and everyone inside, including Phoenix, were prisoners. The woman had never left prison, but had been transferred to the bunker with a new hope and purpose in life. Furthermore, the Sahara flu was merely a fabrication, and the news was engineered to deceive the prisoners. Nadine explained why Denver only found 1,000 bunkers, because that's how many were part of the project called the Domain. Nadine went on to explain that the forced expulsion of prisoners began with Orlando, whose video from inside the bunker had been leaked to the public, sparking protests against allowing such a villain freedom and luxury. Consequently, the government decided to shut down the Domain project, leading to the forced removal of prisoners in order to implement changes in the bunkers. For the time being, the bunkers would be modified to reduce freedom and make the prisoners' lives a little more miserable. An explanation that was very shocking, yet something still troubled Phoenix's mind. Pressed further, Nadine explained that all her groupmates were killers. As for Denver himself, he had stalked and brutally murdered 11 women he met on an online site. Naturally, hearing this devastated Phoenix deeply. Moreover, she now knew that Denver had never truly loved her. Soon, guards subdued the two prisoners and took them to the same corridor where they met their other colleagues, except for Chicago. Orlando, also present, attempted to escape, but was quickly shot down by the guards. The scene ended with the film showing the remaining five prisoners being sent back to their respective bunkers, now transformed into eerie and terrifying chambers. And that's it for the story series of this film. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribe, like and share. See you in the next video. Goodbye.